So you're thinking about buying a home in Massachusetts. There are state to state differences that you need to know. I've been selling real estate in Massachusetts for over 20 years. And in this video, I will be sharing with you some of the unique things about buying a home in Massachusetts. I'm Jane. I'm a realtor based in Wellesley, Massachusetts. My channel is all about moving to the greater Boston area known as Metro West. So please subscribe as each week I put out a new video featuring a new town or what I hope is helpful information about your relocation to Massachusetts. And if you're thinking about moving, I would love to hear from you as I have had a lot of buyers find me right here on my YouTube channel and I'm helping them find their home or have helped them find the just right home. So thank you. So let's start with a closing. What is the basic standard average time of offer to close on a real estate deal? So in Massachusetts, a standard typical deal closes in 60 days. Yes, it can be quicker if you have all cash could be 30 it could be 45 to 60 is pretty standard occasionally they go a little bit longer but in general we like to keep it at 60 days because bad things seem to happen after 60 and we have actually a two-step process here in Massachusetts there's an offer and then a purchase and sale document so the first step is the offer to purchase which is drafted by your realtor and it states the amount you want to offer and is contingent upon an inspection and a mortgage contingency now in some of my other videos I've talked about a hot market and why sometimes people are waiving those contingencies I never want my buyers to waive their inspection contingency but I have some creative ways to make sure that you have an opportunity to get an inspection that I can share with you if we're in a circumstance where it's a really hot house and you want to win it but we still want to inspect and for a financing contingency that is something that I'm gonna have you talk to your lender about right away because if we can get you underwritten and pre-approved by your lender and we can and waive that mortgage contingency that makes your offer very appealing so once we get through the offer if there's an inspection or not we then will get to the purchase and sale document that is a more binding document which supersedes the offer it is typically drafted by the seller's attorney and you as a buyer would have an attorney that will review it on your behalf so in Massachusetts or in my area anyway we do not have escrow we don't have title companies that hold the money in my area the seller's realtor holds the five percent deposit that you're going to put down with your purchase and sale and the attorney is in charge of all the money at the closing so if you have any questions about that please feel free to reach out and we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation because it's very different from some other states and I know pretty complicated one of the other things that you should know about Metro West area of Massachusetts in greater Boston is that a lot of our towns have septic systems instead of sewers so basically it's private sewer so Massachusetts has a regulation known as Title V. And when you're going to sell a home, it is incumbent upon the seller to have their septic basically inspected. So they end up having to pump it as part of that evaluation. And then it's the seller's job to make sure that it passes Title V. So very rarely is there a time where I've seen a listing that said the buyer was in charge of the septic. Usually it's about if the house is getting torn down or something like that. But putting in a septic system can be very costly. It can be anywhere from $25,000 to $40,000 for a whole new system. Sometimes they can replace the distribution box or parts, but the good news as a buyer is that is on the seller's side of the table to worry about. Now we're gonna talk about home energy assessments. There is something called mass save. So in Massachusetts, the state would like to encourage you to be environmentally friendly, sustainable, and replace old systems that aren't efficient. So the utility companies are all contributing, even those of us who are using utilities, we all pay into this fund called Mass Save. So when you buy a house and you close, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is call Mass Save to do an assessment of your home to make it more efficient. So someone will actually come to your house and they'll replace all your light bulbs and they'll give you an assessment of places that you can make your home more insulated, tighter, more efficient. So when we bought our house seven years ago, we had them come and we bought a drafty old Victorian and we they said, here, if you use our vendor, and put in all new insulation, we will reimburse you 80% of that cost. We also used Mass Save to finance our boiler at a 0% interest rate when we convert it. And right now, there are terrific benefits to going with a heat pump system, also known as a mini split, which has, even though I think it has a terrible name because it's heat and air conditioning. So you get rebates and financing options, which are really great that help us to all be greener. So that is something I'm very proud of about my state. You can't do it until you close 
close though. So even if you're pending, don't call them. They won't call you back. In our state, in our area especially, some of our towns have kind of high property taxes. So we have excellent public schools. So the major expense in all of our town budgets in these blue chip towns with excellent school systems, Newton, Wellesley, Wayland, Lincoln, Sudbury, the highest ticket item in our town budgets is the public schools. So one thing you have to be mindful of when you're shopping for a house is what that rate is and how that's going to impact your payment. Now, every town has their own rate. So Newton, Wellesley, Lexington all have about the same rate, Needham, but Dover, Sherborne, Sudbury have a much higher tax rate because they have less of a commercial base in their towns. They're more pastoral and you'll see lower home prices in Sherborne, for example, and you think, wow, that looks like a pretty good deal if you're comparing apples to apples to a house in, say, Wellesley. But you have to make sure that you also look at what your monthly expense is going to be to carry the property because we don't want those taxes to come as a surprise to you and your budget. Another thing to know about buying a home in Metro West is we have a lot of historic properties. So again, in our towns, we value our historic homes and we want to preserve them. So some towns have created commissions and groups to monitor and maintain and encourage you to not tear down an old home. Also, there's homes in my town of Wellesley that are on the National Historic Preservation list and you can't make changes to the exterior without jumping through hoops. So it hasn't necessarily stopped the teardown culture that we've experienced in Greater Boston. Buyers do want new and they like that new floor plan where the kitchen's attached to the family room, which is attached to the mudroom, which is attached to the garage. So some of our homes have met the bulldozer, but most towns have a demo delay to at least discourage or drag out the process a little bit to save some of these older homes. Now, I live in a home that was built in 1878, which we've done quite a bit of updating. We have a slate roof and some of those slates are original. I actually took a ride up in a bucket truck with slate expert one time. He told me my roof is all Vermont slate and basically they only replace the slates that crack or break over the years. So instead of putting on a new roof every 20 years, every couple of years we have them come and just check on it. So that's kind of a cool thing about owning an older home that we appreciate and I think that's kind of cool. Another thing to know is that in addition to trying to limit the teardowns, we also try to limit development. I have buyers that I'm working with right now from Florida and excited to hear that we talk about limiting development in wetlands and conservation land because I think it's a bit of the wild west so to speak. But I can give you a great example in the town of Wayland. There's this beautiful pond called Dudley Pond and it used to be a vacation place for people from Boston. So it has some head funky little cottages on smaller lots. And there's a rule in the town that if you are going to rebuild, you can only rebuild on the existing footprint. So some of the homes are a little bit funky, but a lot of them have a water view. And it's just something people deal with buying property around Dudley Pond. Another thing that we experienced when we bought our house in Wellesley was when we bought it, we knew the wiring was old and had to be replaced. The old wiring that was the original kind of wiring, which was really like turn of the century, was called knob and tube. So 20 years ago when I got into real estate, the home inspector would come and I remember I sold a Victorian to a, I had the listing and the buyer had an inspection. Most of the house had been updated, but like the third floor hadn't been. And he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a knob and tube, it's old wiring. Well, fast forward 20 years, now it's 20 years older. Insurance companies are less interested in writing policies for homes with knob and tube. So now we just pretty much, if we have a house that's all knob and tube, we'll start with an estimate to get rid of it. So basically we have 20, 17 wiring in our 1878 house. But I can connect you with people who won't charge you an arm and a leg to make that switch. Here's one more thing we watch out for in old homes. And I also had this in my house when we first bought it, but I knew about it and I knew how to get rid of it. There's different kinds of asbestos. Asbestos was used in the 20s and 30s, maybe earlier. It was a great insulation. Now it's not so good. It was used as a wrap around pipes. So when we bought our house here, first thing we did after we closed was call the asbestos removal company. These guys came in in hazmat suits. They literally just cut out the old copper plumbing pipes, heating pipes, and replaced it with PVC. And then they disposed of the asbestos, which honestly is not as expensive as you would think. It wasn't bad. It was maybe $4,000 to do my whole basement of my house, which is like 2,500 square feet. There's also a kind of tile that we saw a lot in the 30s, 40s, 50s. That was a floor tile that we'll see in basements. And again, they say, oh, well, if it's not in bad shape, you can cover it up with a rug. I'm like, no, no, just get rid of it. 
because someday someone's going to want to take that rug up and you might as well just get rid of it. So that's another fun thing about owning an older home, but something I can help you with. So I hope I have not scared you off owning an older home. As I said, I am the proud owner of a true Victorian. A lot of times you get some really cool construction and it's a really an important part of our history to maintain some of these older homes. But I can also show you a newer home. So just let me know what your preference is. So if you're thinking about moving to Metro West, please reach out. I would be so honored to help you and your family get relocated to the Metro West area of Boston. And if you're curious about what it's like to work with me, here's a brief summary. Once we connect, I'm going to suggest we do a phone call or a Zoom call so we can get to know each other a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to find out is if you have a lender. If you don't have a lender, I'm going to get you connected to a couple of great companies that can give you great rates and start that process because we're going to need that before you start your search. Then we're going to talk about your needs, wants, price points, style, likes, dislikes. Do you want to be out in the country? Do you want a big yard? Do you have to have central air and updated bathrooms? Those kinds of things. And then we'll start sharing homes online of things you like. And then we get to the fun part where we actually schedule time together to go out and see these homes and make competitive offers. So we're still in an environment. Here it is. It's late May 2024. Well-priced homes in great condition are definitely still enjoying multiple offers. So it's important for us to have a well-developed strategy on how to make your offer stand out amongst the competition. And that is something I can absolutely help you with. And I can talk to you about one-on-one. -on -one. So thanks as always for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope I'll hear from you when you're coming to Greater Boston. Thank you.